I just want to say again how incredible this effort has been by Gianna. I, this magazine is really something. Uh, well, that's it. You'll find it. <laughs> You'll find it. Okay, here we go. I've got a poem that uh, it's from Poem After Carlos Tramon de Andrade. Uh, Tramon de Andrade was a great Brazilian poet, but in Portuguese, of course. He had passed away. I wanted to, you know, do something to honor him. So I went looking for something in his poetry, in translation, of course, that I could use somehow. And what I found was a three-word sentence in a poem of his. A three-word sentence that says, <coughs> it's life, Carlos. <laughs> so this is poem at the cross on that Friday. It's life, Carlos, is the epigraph. Uh, thank you for your attention, and we'll see you after this, right? It's life that is hard. Waking, sleeping, eating, loving, working, and dying are easy. It's life that suddenly fills both ears with the sound of that symphony that forces your pulse to race and swells your heart near to bursting. It's life, not listening, that stretches your neck and opens your eyes and brings you into the worst weather of the winter to arrive once more at the house where love seemed to be in the air. And it's life, just life, that makes you breathe deeply in the air that is filled with wood smoke and the dust of the factory because you hurry, and now your lungs heave and fall with the nervous excitement of a leaf in spring breezes. Though it is winter, and you are swallowing the dirt of the town. It isn't death when you suffer. It isn't death when you miss each other and hurt for it. When you complain, that isn't death. When you fight with those you love, when you misunderstand, when one line in a letter or one remark in person ties one of you in knots, when the end seems near, when you think you will die, when you wish you were already dead, none of that is death. It's life, after all, that brings you a pain in the foot and a pain in the hand, a sore throat, a broken heart, a cracked back, a torn gut, a hole in your abdomen, an irritated stomach, a swollen gland, a growth, a fever, a cough, a hiccup, a sneeze, a bursting blood vessel in the temple. It's life, not an nerve ends, that puts the heartache on a pedestal and worships it. It's life, and you can't escape it. It's life, and you ask for it. It's life, and you won't be consumed by passion. You won't be destroyed by self-destruction. You won't avoid it by abstinence. You won't manage it by moderation, because it's life. Life everywhere. Life at all times. And so you won't be consumed by passion. You will be consumed by life. It's life that will consume you in the end, but in the meantime. It's life that will eat you alive, but for now, it's life that calls you to the street where the wood smoke hangs and the bare hint of a whisper of your name. But before you go, too late. Life got its tentacles around you. It hooks into your heart. And suddenly you come awake as if for the first time. And you are standing in a part of the town where the air is sweet. Your face flushed, your chest thumping, your stomach a planet, your heart a planet, your every organ a separate planet. All a bit of a piece, though the pieces turn separately. Oh, silent indications of the inevitable. As among the natural restraints of winter, in good sense, life blows you apart in her arms. Thank you. Mm -hmm.